So I am also talking about Edgerome, but slightly different here. Um, about some issues with Edgerome uh, that were kind of mentioned earlier. So with Edgerome and six gigahertz, there's a couple issues that come up. Um, one big one is the, we can't use different SSIDs for six gigahertz, five gigahertz, 2.4. We only have the name Edgerome. That's all we have. So we've been doing a lot of testing at a various universities across the world. Um, a lot of people have been playing with this. Word over Wi-Fi in Twitter back in June said 99.4% of his clients are not having problems. Is this an issue? So um, basically, I've, I've been digging into this a lot. Um, real quick, Edgerome basically is a radius server that forwards the request to a central, to a a broker, that broker forwards it onto the next group, next site, so we can roam around the world. I was in Amsterdam and got this uh, shortcut using Adrian's Wi-Fi, or uh, shortcut on iOS. In Amsterdam, I had Edgerome. I'm from the United States. I had Edgerome connectivity in Amsterdam. It is growing. Um, it continues to grow. Um, with Edgerome, there's an SP site and there's IDP sites. IDP sites create users, SP sites are just the site providing the SSID so that people can join. Anybody can have an SP site. Museums like this boat in Amsterdam, I had Edgerome on this boat. Um, coffee shops, lots of different places have Edgerome. Um, another option is open roaming. Um, in the, the world, open roaming is starting to grow. It uses Passpoint, if you are unfamiliar with it. Edgerome can roam onto open roaming. It's a lot more complex to set up because it's not just um, radius messages that are being sent, but it is a possibility. Um, there is some documentation issues or different things, but it is an option with growing Edgerome. Um, additionally, this is kind of a personal project that I've been involved in. Um, in Utah, we're doing this thing we, we've been calling Edgerome to go. You basically can take any device that you can put um, OpenWRT on it. It does a cap, or it's basically CapWAP tunnel, kind of. It's not officially CapWAP, but kind of a tunnel to a central site. So I can go stand this device up anywhere I have an internet connectivity, and it will provide an Edgerome network wherever I'm at. So this travel router can actually be an Edgerome site. Um, this is kind of how it works real quick. So the device has OpenWRT with WireGuard. WireGuard tunnels the traffic back to a, to a server where we have OpenWISP to control the, the devices we're putting out. Um, it uses free radius to handle the radius traffic that it forwards up to the, the regional ser servers and then passes the radius messages onto their appropriate sites. Um, for those that know Luke Jenkins at Weber State University, he's the one that came up with this idea. Um, we've, been, we've been testing it. We're really small scale at this point, but pretty cool stuff we're doing. We ha he actually has it in that coffee shop right there in Ogden, Utah. Um, but pretty cool stuff we've been doing on that side. So Edgerome's growing. How do we handle this growing need for Edgerome with the, with the six gigahertz stuff? Edgerome's official WPA3 recommendations um, is to use transition mode. As uh, was mentioned earlier, transition mode doesn't exist when you go ML, MLOs and different things. Um, when you enable six gigahertz on, a on some vendors, you don't even get a transition mode available anymore. So you can't even do that anymore. So as soon as you enable six gigahertz, that's a problem. Um, there's also the issue with the single SSID edge room um, across the bands, as I mentioned. And then do not do WPA3 Enterprise 192-bit. That is their official recommendations at this point. Um, so when you do a packet capture, this is a packet capture using Juniper Mist. Juniper Mist actually does support transition mode. Um, just, since this showed all three, I just left out the other two, but this shows WPA which is uh, WPA2 Enterprise, and then is WPA SHA-256, which is WPA3 Enterprise. So there is transition mode from some vendors. Um, 
but not everybody's doing it. It is a growing uh, use case. Cisco has now s supported a transition mode on iOS XE Dublin 17.12.x. Um, it is a possibility. I have tested this with Luke Jenkins in, at Weber State. We tested this, it does work. Um, not all clients support transition modes as was mentioned, but it is a possibility um, for the, if you care about that 0.6% um, of clients. Um, the, here's some PCAPs that we did um, showing, showing the different things. So the association response joined with WPA2. Although it said it was a WPA3 enterprise transition mode um, AKM in the in the beacon, so it does work. I tested it. This this is a client I found. It's pretty good t client I've found. It's an old um, Surface RT, no, end of life, no no updates. It's never going to get support for WPA3. It's kind of a dead product, but it's good for testing. So they do exist. Clients do exist. They're kind of getting rare. And as we go, they will probably get more and more rare in the home world, in our, in our businesses, in industry. That might not be so much the case, but there are other options for handling this as well. So JJ, um, in a tweet, said this after WOPC Phoenix. She said that a lot of clients are breaking when they see multiple AKMs that they don't understand. So when they see that SHA-256 AKM in there, they're like, I don't know how to handle this. I'm not even gonna even try. And they just fail. That's an issue with your doing transition modes. So should we be doing these? That's the big question. Um, ultimately, 99.4% of clients are, are supporting WPA3 Enterprise full, the full version. With WPA3 Enterprise and WPA2, the only difference really is a different S or AKM, as well as requiring uh, or having that f that um, the bit for protected management frames set to required. That's really the only difference, and and we've had this for so long. Client support is getting pretty strong. I've, I've heard some people say that they've actually gone full WPA3 Enterprise on Edgerome and they're having very, like, one or two cases at most. So ultimately, at this point, it's probably wise to maybe try it out. I definitely would test. Test it out. If you have options to do transition mode, probably start there. Follow Edgerome's official recommendations there. But ultimately, at the end of the day, um, it's very possible that this may be a no issue moving forward, especially in a couple years to come for a lot of our edge room sites. That's what I got. Thank you.